Here we go, little fella. Let me get you back up to your mother. Let us unveil the power of Premiere Pro Zoom Effect to create emotion and dynamics into your sequences. Who wouldn't want to be able to use this effect like some of the biggest names in cinema? In this quick tutorial, we'll learn the art of scaling images to simulate a zoom lens. Plus, we'll look at how the masters balance between subtlety and excess to get the most out of this tool. Let us go. So I've got my clip ready in the timeline. Let's have a quick look. Wonderful. Now the shot's pretty bland, so let's add that beautiful bit of cinematic zoom. Okay, so for this one, I think I want to do a zoom out. We want the camera to be slowly going away from him as if we're leaving him because it's kind of awkward. So let's navigate over to the effects control area where we're going to be playing with the scale and adding some keyframes. So I'm going to work a little bit backwards. We want to end on what we can see right now. A little shortcut is if you hit the end key, it gives you the last frame in your clip. I'm going to put a keyframe there by clicking the scale button. Oops. Next thing I'm going to do is hit the home key, which will bring us back to the start of the clip. Boom. And I'm going to zoom by, let's say, we'll just punch in 120. Let's have a quick look. Here we go, little fella. Let me get you back up to your But what if we wanted to do something a little bit different, a bit fancier? Okay, let's go to level two. This time, instead of just using the motion controls, we're going to use an effect called Transform. It looks a bit complicated, but what it mainly does is give us motion blur, which makes it look totally cool. Go up to Effects and we type in Transform, oh, if you can spell properly, and then just double click on it or drag it over to your clip. Shazam! Now we have the Transform. Now to add motion blur, we untick Use Composition Shutter Angle, and we put the shutter angle at 180. Quite often when we zoom in or out, we want it to be either on our character or the main point of interest in the scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up some guidelines so I know exactly the point I want to zoom in and out to. Click on our playback monitor, we go over to view, and we go show rulers, mine are already there and click on that. And you'll get these lovely rulers on either side. Now I want to zoom in on the big fatty's koala's eyes, so I'm going to drag the ruler down which gives me a line, stick it on eyeball there. I'm gonna make a little like a cross here. I'm gonna drag the one from the side, stick it in the middle and that's gonna be my point where I'm gonna zoom in and out of. So again for this one I want to do like a zoom out but like a rushed one. So I'm gonna say oh let's really zoom in on our big fatty koala. So I'm gonna go 200 and I want to line up my little cross here with his eyeball. Oh now don't use the anchor point that's I want to use the position. Right on his eyeball. Cool. And then we're going to click the stopwatch for position. And we're going to click the stopwatch for scale to give us our keyframes. Next, we're going to hit end to give us the last frame in the clip. I'm going to hit this reset button, and that's going to put us back to the original size of the footage. Click. And you're saying, uh oh, oh, it's kind of all out of whack, dude. That's okay, because I'm going to also click the one for position. Oops, and it brings us back. As we zoom out to the frame, I want to gently stop, rather than just slamming into the last frame. So let's highlight our keyframes, right click on them, and then click Temporal Interpolation. And we're going to choose Ease In, so it slowly pushes into that last keyframe. And I'll hit home, and let's have a playback. Here we go, little fella. Let me get you back up to your The motion blur is going to become more prominent the quicker the frame moves. So if I move the zoom like way up ahead here, let's have a look. It'll be like, Shazam! Oh, here we go, little fella. Let me get you back up to your Now, if we want to get rid of these guides, we click on the monitor, go view, clear guides. Coolio. And that's it, folks. But what if your original shot isn't big enough to zoom? No problem. Adobe has a new one-click AI tool that will create a way wider angle for you to use. Find out how to use it in this tutorial here. Catch you in the next vid.